All right, let's do this. I think I should. I'm taking my shirt off and I'm going to put it with my blazer over just the t-shirt. Alex is getting dressed. So I'm stalling. I'm stalling. All right, here we go. Are we rolling? My name is Mike Michaud, and this is Alec Kalagmanis. <laughs> Alec Miras. My name is Alex Kalagmanis. He's of Greek origin, and it's very difficult to pronounce his name. Some people really get nervous when they're in front of the camera, and they lose the ability to... And by the speak. way, we have our uh, cameraman over there, Matt Kenny. Can Matt you, can Kenny, you say something? Can you say love hi? you, buddy. Can you say hi, Matt? Just say hi. Matt, just say hi. Hi. Hi, there you go, see? <laughs> Dude, we need a corkscrew to get it out wow. of the guy. Okay. We're here to talk about... You stay behind the camera. We're here to talk about a classic film from 1946 titled Gilda. All right, let's talk about Gilda. Gilda, so what do you think? You know How many what? times have I you have seen never it? heard of the film until hmm. you told me to watch it. Really? And I was pleasantly never. surprised. How, why? I love the lighting where she's in the dark, and then she comes out, and we see her face, all of them, very dimly lit. The room, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the story. The story basically is about a, a, a petty thief, Glenn Ford, who plays this petty thief. He gets caught cheating and gambling, and on his way out, he gets robbed. And he's saved by the robber by a guy named... Balin Munson. Balin Munson, played by McCready, was it? Great, yep, George Great actor McCready. McCready. Who stops him and tells him, okay, I'm saving your hide, but... There's another place you should go, but don't go play, playing your gambling, cheating tricks over there. He goes, and he does, and it turns out to be McCready's gambling casino. casino. So instead of beating him up or taking care of him, Glenn Ford talks McCready into hiring him. And the film takes off from there. And they become very close, and they become like buddies. They become confidants, and they have a great operation going. Things could not be better until... Until McCready gets married, brings home this new wife, who is Rita Hayworth, the beautiful Rita Hayworth. And it turns out that Glenn Ford and Rita Hayworth have had a romantic history, and it has not been good. They hate each other's guts. Go see the film. I was surprised because of the way the script was put together. It was like several different genres in one. That's right. And even the room that McCready lived in with the blinds and the push buttons so he could hear the music, so he could turn it off. And it was all so claustrophobic, like he was living in a mausoleum. I love the effect of that room. At first, he doesn't start off as such a cynical character, but by the end, he becomes this maniacal, insane, possessed yeah. character. And, and talking about the genres, it typically is considered a film noir. Um, so it has it a is. Femme, femme fatale, played by Rita Hayworth. It's a story about the underbelly of society. Um, but it also has a couple of song and dance numbers that are outside right. of typically the, the film noir genre. But This really launched her career, though. Did, this it kind of took her to a kind of another level, level, mythic level. She had already been a star. Um, she but had, she's really good in it. Yeah, I'm really surprised. Really good, he had a really lot good. of different emotions going on in there. The, this genre gave actors such a great opportunity to play good parts. And Glenn Ford was good in He it was too. fantastic. Glenn Ford had just a come back. A young Glenn Ford. Now, some of you might not even know who the hell Glenn Ford is. He has nothing to do with the car, folks. I knew him as Superman's <laughs> dad in, in the 1977 version of Superman. That's where I knew Glenn Ford. Oh, from, really? Which, and Got I loved it. him. Yeah, it was a great film. And I, liked, I also liked the lighting, the black and white lighting but I also like the dialogue, the snappy one-liners between Incredible all of them. Incredible writing. Now, I'm, I'm so writing. happy to say that I have seen this film um, in New York and L.A. Really? In screenings. You've in been revivals, to New York? In revivals. And it's so fun to see this film with an audience, you know, a revival audience, because they all know the film. They all know the one-liners that really are about well to come. Done. And it's a funny film. Dark. Twisted, Dark, perverse. Twisted. Funny at uh, times as well, yes. But man, what an achievement. For We're still talking about this film, you know, 65 years And you know, she later. was pissed off because about this time, they used her picture. That's right. On the atom bomb. Can you imagine? That they dropped, did they drop it? Because she was a pinup girl. She Her, her image for many, many years she, before this film, or, you know, yep. five years prior to this film, during World War II, pinup girls were prevalent and, and, and was their it the, pictures was were- Was it the atom bomb they dropped 
on Jap- on Japan? It was the the what they did was they used her picture on an atom bomb that they tested on the Bikini Atoll Islands. In the Bikini Islands. Atoll Islands, okay. And she was so angry at that. Because Orson her, Welles, who was married to her at the time, that's right. said that she was so angry, she was almost insane about it. He had to talk her out of going down to the studio. Well, she had had a brother who served in the war. He was never the same yeah. after having served in war. So this, this film hits home for the players in this film on so many levels. I mean, having, having <clears throat> been produced by Columbia Pictures as one of the big productions, after the war ended, people were now coming back to the movie theaters. Matt is uh, signaling us. Okay, two minutes. Okay, so two minutes. Basically, well, this why is where this he film, gets his two-minute monologue. Well, I have a lot to say about this film because anything. I do love this film very much. I have seen it several several times, and I I love it when I get the chance to discuss it with people who either haven't seen it before and have a positive reaction, as Mike did, because I really believe it's a great it's a great film because it's exactly what movie movie making should be. Great actors, great music, tension. There's so many things going on in this film. I mean, how fun was the relationship that Glenn Ford had with Rita Hayworth? They hated each other. Yeah, and at the end they made up. At the end they made up. And and what did you think his, of that? His cane. Oh yeah. The friend. There was there my was my little friend. That's right. He had like this... Al Pacino and Scarface. Come say hello to my little friend. This guy had a stick with a, 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 a knife. knife out of it. <laughs> And then, and then the supporting characters. What about uh, what about the guy who was always in there sweeping the floors in the That's casino? Right. And he was, but he was the wisest one in the room, you know, giving advice, giving. All right, we got to run out of time. Matt's giving us the finger here. I, <laughs> we can make this one a little bit longer, Matt. We okay. Anyway, listen, I'm going to take the first minute because I know that I'm not going to get one if I give it to Al first. I think this movie is a must see for you, especially if you're into movies and you're into noir. You know, the old Humphrey Bogart stuff, the Maltese Falcon and and uh, Robert Mitchum stuff. Sure, Double Indemnity. Double Indemnity. You got to see this film. It, it Again, it's a harken back to a time when movies were made with people in mind. You know, there were no special Good effects. Good stories. It was just dialogue and people engaging in conversational intercourse. Can I say that word on camera? Absolutely. That's what, that's what this film really it's was. It's really well done. It's like a huge dance. Go ahead, Alex, because I only want one minute. Well, I just wanted to thank you, Mike, for for trusting my recommendation and seeing this film so that we could talk about it. And uh, I want to encourage everybody to see this film. You're going to fall in love with Rita Hayworth. Um, She truly was one of the more, more exemplary movie stars that the studio system produced. I don't know if so she was talented. exemplary. She, she was really a damn was good so, actress. so, yeah, she was so, so talented. You're going to love her dancing and performing and emoting. And and so uh, Check it see out. this film and please comment below and let us know what you think. Comment below? Or, or if you want to send us a video message of what you think of the film, you can do that. Well, don't you want to comment and something else and something else? You want to... Uh, comment, uh, register. No, what is the three things? What are those? This is your part. <laughs> this guy okay, you never comment, this. comment, ask a question. What? No. <laughs> comment, sign in. Matt, what is it? Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Like, comment, and subscribe. Mike and below. Al, what the hell? Do it again. So please, like, comment, and subscribe below. Mike and Al, what, what the, the hell? hell? It's here. It doesn't move forward, right? Oh, here. that's what he's doing. He's I'm swiveling. swiveling. Well, you should. Okay, but you should. Move, you should move this way. No, but again, we're back here like kissing cousins, man. We're not even touching each other.